And the Sunday school always had talent from way back when we do our Sunday school anniversary. And we want to thank um, the young people that are using it to the glory of God. Okay, so we just want to thank them, and I trust that you understood it. If you didn't understand it, well, then you need to go back and read about Ruth, Naomi, and all those the characters they were speaking about, but we really want to thank them. Okay, um, the text has been read, and that's, uh, that's what I want to speak about today. You know, throughout this world, throughout Christendom, Today is known as Palm Sunday. And it's so-called because of the palms that were placed on the street as Jesus triumphantly came into Jerusalem. And this story is recorded in all the gospel. All the gospel writers recorded this story. But before we go further, I just want to give you the setting and the scene of what was read. About five days before the Passover, Jesus and his disciples come from Bethany going up to Jerusalem. Now, this feast is the most important of all the Jewish feasts, the Passover feast. And I understand that in this feast you have pilgrims um, going from Capernaum, from Bethany, all going up to Jerusalem. And sometimes they said you could have over 300 pilgrims going up to Jerusalem. But our attention is drawn today not from uh, the, the, the multitude that was going up to celebrate, but our attention is drawn to the minority that so rendered or submitted. You see, Palm Sunday is much more than palms. Palm Sunday is all, also about submission. It's submission of Jesus to the Father's will. You know, in Matthew 26, Jesus is speaking in one of, uh, in one of, in Garden of Gethsemane. And he was able to say, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And Jesus was willing to, to uh, submit himself, <clears throat> excuse me, submit himself to the Father's will. Now, the verse said that Jesus was ascending up to Jerusalem. And this is very important. This is a statement that was filled with danger. If you read John chapter 10, verse 22 to 40, we don't have the time. But Jesus was in Jerusalem, and they wanted to kill him. And he had to, he had to leave there. So when he says he's going up to Jerusalem, it's not a bed of roses. He's going up to Jerusalem because he's going to be killed in Jerusalem. And what made it worse, Lazarus, he had just raised Lazarus from the dead. That happened uh, in Bethany, and all the talk went up to Jerusalem. And you know what they said? We're going to kill Lazarus. Because of Lazarus being raised from the dead, so many people believe in Jesus. And they were in this uh, caravan going up to Jerusalem. But there was danger facing Jesus. But you see, the, the, this danger and Jesus going up to Jerusalem, it was not a coincidence. It was uh, being, the scriptures were being fulfilled of the Messiah. And if we read Zechariah 9 verse 9, it was foretold as far as it was God's plan as far as Jesus going up to Jerusalem. Zechariah 9 verse 9 says, Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout, O daughters of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He's just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass, even upon a colt 
the fall of an ass. So it was not some, uh, just a coincidence that Jesus was riding a donkey going up to Jerusalem. He submitted himself. You see, he didn't have to, uh, even though danger was facing him going up to Jerusalem, the Bible says he set a, his face as a flint towards Jerusalem, even though he knew what was going to happen. But it wasn't by chance, because Jesus himself said, in John chapter 18, he says, no man taketh my life from me. I have power to lay down my life, and I have power to take it up again. So this submission was necessary. This would lead to the cross, the reason why Jesus came. You see, he knew that going up there would lead to this is going to be the Last Supper. It also going to lead to the first communion where Jesus with his disciples, he took bread and wine, breaking it and say, eat and drink. And that's what we did this morning. He knew going up to Jerusalem would lead to trials. He knows this will lead to scourging. He knows this will lead to him being crucified. But he was willing to do it for you and for me. He submitted. Paul writes into the Philippians. In Philippians 2 verse 7. And he gave us a good understanding of how Jesus submitted himself. Philippians 2 verse 7. He says, but made himself of no reputation, took in upon himself the form of a servant, and being found in likeness of men, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and had given him a name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, those in heaven, those in earth, those under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He submitted himself because he was bent on going to Jerusalem. It was God's will. But Jesus, even though he knew what was going to happen to him as a man, he humbled himself. And he became a man. But not only Jesus humbled himself. We see even uh, Jesus not only submitting himself to the Father, but we see the disciples submitting themselves to the will of the Savior. In verse 29, the disciples, he says that Jesus told them, he says, go. And you know, this word, go, it was not a suggestion. They had to decide if they're going to go or not. They submitted. They submitted their will. And here we have submission again. The Bible is filled with submission. And here are the disciples, he says, go ye. And you know, he, God is he's telling us the same thing. In Matthew 28, verse 19, we have the Great Commission. So not only is saying that you should go, he tells us we should go. He told the disciples and he's extended to us. Matthew 28, he says, go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. But they had to submit themselves to obey what Jesus was telling them. He says, going to the village over against you, he says, you shall find a colt. You see, Jesus knew that this donkey is going to be there. He knew that he's going to be tied because he says, go on ahead of you. He has not been there yet. He's still uh, somewhere in Bethpage. But you see, uh, nothing is hidden from him. He knows about your past. 
He knows about your future. He knows about your, he knows about your present and he knows about your future. He knows everything. He knows about your, tomorrow, your, your tomorrow. And what, that's why Jesus says, he said, don't worry for your life. What you shall eat. What you shall put on life is more than food. In Matthew 6 and verse 33, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all his things shall be added unto you. And he said, as you go, you're going to see this cold tide. And you know, as you look around, a lot of people's lives are tied up in sin. A lot of people's are, lives are in bondage of sin. A lot of people's lives are tied up, tangled up in this world. That's why we have the mass shooting. We have the rapes. We have all these things. People's lives are tied up and they need to be loose. Jesus is telling before I could use, you have to, uh, it's tied, you have to loose it. A lot of people in this, in this life, lives need to be loose. There are a lot of people that in this, not only this country, all over, their lives need to be loose. And that's how we were. Before we accepted Jesus, our lives were tied up. Our lives were tangled up. You know, uh, our past, sometimes we, we forget. You see, we can't forget our past. That's how we were. The Bible tells us, a matter of fact, we were dead in trespasses and sins, but it says, now you are alive in Christ Jesus. A lot of people's lives are tied up. It needs to be loose. That's how we were. And sometimes we forget it. And the song says, lest I forget Gethsemane. Lest I forget thy love for me. Lest I forget thy, I forget the verse, how it goes. But lead me to Calvary. See, when we look at Calvary, it will humiliate us. It will humble us. You see, uh, um, maybe you would say, well, my past wasn't so bad. But if you don't know Jesus, your life was tangled up with sin. And only Jesus could open it. Our past. And, that, and, and now we can say, I'm wrapped up. I'm tied up. I'm tangled up in Jesus. Jesus is my all in all. But just think about it. What it cost Jesus to purchase our salvation. Peter said we've not been redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold. But we have been redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus. And if you're listening to me this morning, wherever you are, I don't care how your life has been tied up. I don't care how your life has been tangled up. I want to let you know that Jesus could lose you. Because in, in chapter 19, the Bible tells us just before Jesus got to Bethany, the Bible says he got to Jericho. And there was a man that wanted to see Jesus. And he couldn't see him and he climbed a tree. The Bible says amidst those people and so many pilgrims, the Bible says when Jesus got there, he looked up. And he said, Zacchaeus, come down, for today I must abide by your house. But prior to that, Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector. But he was also not a nice person. Zacchaeus was a crooked person. But you know what? Nobody didn't have to tell him he was crooked. He knew he was crooked. Because the Bible says that when after Jesus said, salvation is coming to your house, the Bible says, that Zacchaeus received Jesus joyfully. His life was loose. And he said that, he says, if I've stolen from any man, I'll, re re I'll restore to them fourfold. That's not being generous. That's what the law calls for. But he also said, half of my goods I will give to the poor. That's being generous. And that's what he's able, Jesus is able to do. After he's tidy, he, he loose you, that's what he's able to do. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all, thi <clears throat> all things have become new. 
And it doesn't matter how your life is tied up. It doesn't matter what your life is tied up in sin and problem. It doesn't matter what your person you are. The Bible says, Romans 3.23, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Paul writes in, in 1 Corinthians, and in the Corinthians, he says, this life that, what he says, such was some of you. You were thieves, you were liars, you were homosexual. He said, but now you are clean. That's what happened when Jesus loosed you. You don't have to give up. So it's, Jesus said, loose him. In other words, free him, free him for all that binds him. And he says, bring him here to me. And that's what we need to do with people. People whose lives need to be loose, we need to bring them to Jesus. We need to bring them to Jesus, and that's why uh, we, we, we started in sharing Jesus without fear. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. And Jesus said, I want you to loose this cold and bring him here to me. And you see, Jesus is the only one that can tame this, uh, this cold. The Bible says nobody had sat on that cold before. Jesus is the only one. Acts 4 and 12 tells us, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. Doesn't matter what your life is. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Sin is a, it, is, it, it laid you, lays you down. It weighs you down. You see all the bad things we've seen in the world? People are not doing it. Uh, they, they become sinners. And you say, well, they do it and they become a sinner. No, they do it because they are sinners. You don't, people do bad things because they are sinners. It doesn't make you a sinner when you do bad things. You do bad things because you are a sinner. And this morning, Jesus wants to lose you. It doesn't matter how far you think you have gone. You might be tied up like this donkey. You just need to lose it and bring it to Jesus. And Jesus said, if anyone asks you, there's always going to be public opinion. People is always going to ask you. And that's what um, our theme verse in 1 Peter 3.15. He says, you have to be ready when people ask you. You say, always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And Jesus said, when, when they ask you why you take it to the, the cult, he said, you tell them the, the Lord has need of him. You see, they, you see, that's what they had to do. Just use exactly what Jesus tells them. It is not their own words. And it, it's repeated that, um, in, it said, in verse 32, it says, So those who were sent went away and found it just as he said to them. But as they were loosing the coal, the owners of it said to them, Why are you loosing the coal? And they said, The Lord had need of it. And that's exactly what Jesus told them. And that should be our message. It is not about us. It's what Jesus said. Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. The prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 40 says the flowers would fail, the grass would wither, the flowers would fade, but the word of God shall stand forever. That's the message, not our message. The message is exactly what God tells them to, to, to say. That's what he tells us. We need to tell people, according to God's word, they're all sinners, Romans 3.23. We need to tell people, yes, there is a penalty for sin. Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death. We can't add anything. We shouldn't add to it. We shouldn't take away. And that's exactly what they did. And Jesus said, bring them here to me. And that's what we need to do. Bring people who are bound by sin. We need to bring them to Jesus. There are a lot of hurting people. You see, not only we have the submission of, the, of Jesus to his father. 
Not only we have the submission of the disciples to the will of the Savior, but we also have the submission of the donkey to the Creator. From verse 35, he says, They brought the coal to Jesus, and he sat on it. And this is, this is very important. I don't know if you understand how difficult is it is to, difficult it is to climb on a donkey's back without finding yourself on the ground. But you see, the colt submitted himself to Jesus, and I could speak from example. From, from example. I could speak from my father bought a donkey and he brought it home. And I'm going to tell you, to break, we call it to break in the donkey so you allow someone to happen, get on his back. It's not going to happen the first time. It's not going to happen the second time. It's not going to happen the third time or the fourth time. It would take more than that. And when my father brought home this donkey and one of my brothers, my father um, held the rope and he, he, he told him to get on the donkey's back. And I'm going to tell you, when he got on the donkey's back, next thing he was on the ground and lost his front tooth. And I won't tell you which one of my brothers. I'll tell you it's not Nathaniel. That I could tell you. <laughs> but I have, I have seven other brothers. And if you want to know which one, just ask them, could you smile? <laughs> and you'll see. So I see it firsthand. It's not easy to get on a donkey's back because it's not broken in. It's not trained. But the Bible says he got on his back. He submitted himself to Jesus. And that's what he wants from us. He wants us to submit himself to us. You see, all these things, Jesus knew he was going to happen. Jesus, nothing took him by surprise. The cult and stuff is going to be tied. And he knows all about you. He knows about the storms in your life. Whatever you're going through or whatever you will go through. COVID-19, he knew all about it. He knew after one year this thing is not going to be finished. He knew when it's going to start. He knew when it's going to be finished. And I'm going to tell you, there is nobody in this world could tell you when this virus is going to disappear. But you know what? He knows. He knows. And that's why when he says something, we should follow what he says. Because he knows the beginning from the end. And the Bible says that he sat on it. Many people are waiting to be freed. Many people are waiting to submit to Jesus. The stubborn will of the donkey submitted to Jesus. And that's what Jesus is able to do in the midst of a storm. In Mark 4, 34, the Bible says Jesus told his disciples, go on the other side. And he went to sleep. And the Bible says they ran into a storm. And they woke him and they says, Master, do you care that we perish? And Jesus said, oh, ye of little faith. And the Bible says that he rebuked the wind. He said, wind, be still, the sea. He says, be calm. And the Bible says there is a great calm. And they turn around and say, what manner of man is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Are you going through storms of life? Are you going through a time where you feel uh, the, 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 the storms in this life and I don't know what's going to happen? I want to let you know you could trust Jesus. Jesus is able to make the storm in your life calm. Is someone that's uh, needling you, someone giving you a hard time, Jesus is able to work on them too. He knows that you're going to be laid up from your job or were laid up from your job. He knows all that, but he also knows where the next job is. The Bible says he's able to do far more exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask, I think. And to our young people, maybe you think that you're alone. You are not alone. When you trust Jesus, you didn't trust him just to come to church, go to Sunday school. You, he, he's concerned about your whole life. And one time he told his disciples, he said, look at the sparrows. They sold for a penny. 
He says, but not one of them falls to the ground without my father knowing about it. And everything that's happening in your life now as a Christian, it's not happening by chance. Jesus knows all about it. And I so, I so love this song. This one that speaks about Jesus as a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. That's a song they're gonna, at my funeral you're going to have to sing. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in praise. Say, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. The question is this morning, is your will submitted to his will? You see, we must submit to him now. And those of you that are listening to me, you need to submit to him now. That's why he went to the cross. That's why he was going up to Jerusalem. He was going to die for you because the Bible says we all have sinners and we come short of the glory of God. The Bible also says it's not by good works. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 said, for by grace we are saved through faith and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Jesus could free you this morning and the Bible says that before Zacchaeus, Jesus, when he was going, as he went, before he got to Jericho, the Bible says he was going and there was a poor, poor man, a blind man by the roadside begging. And when he heard the commotion, he asked, what's happening? And they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And he cried out, Jesus, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the people said, shut up. Be quiet. And Moses tell him, quiet. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And as the parade moved by, and Jesus got to him. And Jesus said, wait, what's happening? And they, and they said, go ahead, he's calling you. And Jesus said, what do you want me to do? He says, to receive my sight. Jesus said, thy faith has made you well. Go in peace. And that's what we were. We were all blind. And you see, the blind man sees the opportunity, and you can seize the opportunity this morning. And Jesus is passing by, just as he's going up to Jericho, he's going up to passing Bethpage, he's passing Bethany, and he's going up to Jerusalem, he's going to die. He might never pass this way again. He was not coming back for Zacchaeus, for the, the blind man. He would never come back that way again. And so it is maybe, Jesus, this is your last opportunity. Jesus is passing by this morning. And he went to the cross of Calvary. And he gave himself, uh, he submitted to the Father's will. Are you willing to submit to him this morning? And we read this morning, Philippians 2 verse 7. You see, if you fail to submit to him now, you see, one way or the other, you're going to have to submit to him. The Bible says, but at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The blind man sees the opportunity. And if you don't know Jesus this morning, you could seize the opportunity. You could say, yes, I believe that I'm a sinner. I believe Jesus paid the price for my sin. I'm willing to accept Jesus as payment for my sin. Romans 10 and 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You will be saved from the penalty of sin. We talk about the penalty. You will be saved from the power of sin. And you will be saved one day from the very presence of sin. Jesus humbled himself to the Father. The disciples humbled themselves. They submitted themselves to Jesus. The donkey submitted themselves to Jesus, and there's no reason why you can't submit yourself to Jesus. And whether you do it today, and if you fail to do it, the Bible says you will die in your sins, and where I am, you cannot come. The songwriter says, Will you surrender to the Savior? Now before him humbly bow. You too shall come to know his favor. He will save and save you now. And this is my prayer this morning. That as Jesus is passing by in your life, 
Just as he knows the beginning from the end, Romans 10 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's what the blind man did. He called upon Jesus. Zacchaeus was a crooked man. He was tied up. His life was, he, he was freed because of Jesus. And whatever situation you are in, you could be freed this morning. You could say, I want this Jesus. I believe, yes, that Jesus died for me. You see, without Jesus submitting to the Father, there will be no Good Friday. There will be no Easter next week. But he did it for you and for me. And the question is, are you willing to submit? Surrender yourself to him. The hymn writer says, all to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his daily, in his presence daily live. I surrender, I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. And wherever you are this morning, you can surrender to him. You can say, yes, I want this Jesus. Life is very brief. Over 550,000 people died from the virus. And, I, and that's only from the virus. A lot of people die from other things. And you don't know when it's going to be your turn. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die, and after death, the judgment. And when you stand before God for, for, for failing to submitting and surrendering your life to him, he's going to tell you, he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. And those who are in accepting Jesus, when we stand before him, all he's going to say, call me blessed of my father, you are forgiven. And you don't have, you, for some of you that reject Jesus, it's going to be too late. The Bible says now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. And it's my prayer that if you have not accepted this Jesus, you will do so today before it is too late. For his name's sake, amen.